Well, it's a very simple question with a very complex answer. But um, I'll prefix that with a lot of hard thought and a lot of hard work. But when it boils down to what will the sequel be, it really starts off with what happened to Lucius. From that moment, you're, that, you're on a blank sheet, page one. You're trying to write the next 120 pages and create that. That's hard work. Uh, the, the, the character to me, what, what excited me about it was all there on the page in the sense that like it was very clear to me what the character was thinking at, th th throughout the script. And then there's, there were certain junctions that like you always want a certain amount of, of scenes in the script that you feel are high pressure. So the scenes with Connie were always going to be very important to me mm -hmm. and kind of uh, integral not just to me but to, but to the film working and also the the scenes towards the end with Denzel the, the rest was about kind of filling out uh, a character that you fundamentally believed could win the fights that he was in and that's not physical it's about uh, psychology that you have to develop that you're just the toughest guy in the room not because you're the strongest and that's that's a fun thing to get to play as an actor Um, uh, ex you know, experience enables me to make it easy for myself and because I'm able unusually to draw very very accurate storyboards to the level of very complex comic strips I draw the whole film as a as a storyboard so it's this thick before I begin so I'm fully shooting the thing on paper before I get anywhere near the set. So when I get there, I can position 11 cameras in 11 minutes. I think you take everything from every job that you've done before to the thing that's, that's out in front of you. I think the thing that I couldn't take was kind of the focus that would be on the physical preparation. That was a brand new learning experience, but you, it, to boil it down, I think you take the care that you feel for all of the previous characters that you've played and you put them into the character that you're playing now. That's the job. That's the fundamental job, I think, that you have as an actor. And what I learned from Ridley is kind of endless, but the focus of that would be that um, the job that we do is precious, the time that we have when we're making the job is precious, and that, uh, I don't know, I... I, I it, it shouldn't surprise me, but it surprises me that the, with, the, with the legacy that, that this man has and, and the career that he has built and sculpted for himself, that it's still the day that he's living in presently when he's working is the most important, not anything to do with the past or the future. It's, it's very much present tense. Uh, I think bad experiences of having been the author of Alien and Blade Runner and allowing them to get away from me. That ain't going to happen in the future. Being on the set of a Ridley Scott film is unlike any movie experience I've ever had. Um, and I mean that with complete sincerity. I have been on incredible sets. I have been on the set of Game of Thrones. I've been on um, a, a Star Wars sets uh, uh, in, in, in incredible um, incredibly large productions, and I've not been on anything like uh, like Gladiator 2, and I'm not likely to be on anything like Gladiator 2 again. It's just really not 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 done anymore. Um, and Ridley is the kind of director that insists that all the pieces be in place, has has multiple cameras going at, at once, so all of the things are are there in front of you. Audiences can expect to be incredibly entertained by Gladiator 2, like they were with the first movie. Um, it is uh, a, a powerful ensemble cast um, led incredibly by Paul Meskel and Denzel Washington and, um, and, and, and Ridley Scott. And it is that kind of old school entertainment that, that, that 
does things that can only be done now in cinema. Um, ways that I'm similar to my character is that he's very loyal and um, I, b I believe myself to be uh, a very, very loyal person, uh, loyal to my friends and family. And then um, the difference being, uh, I don't know, I think we're, we're exactly alike. The difference being is that he would never get into, I would never get into an arena with, uh, with, with, with any actor more than 20 years younger than myself. I prepared for this role uh, by um, training, mainly, and, um, and instead of studying Roman history, I used it as an excuse to rewatch all of my favorite Ridley Scott movies and to just let my imagination fill itself with his um, uh, visual authorship of cinema and, um, and to, to, to just kind of unconsciously deliver myself into his vision, um, uh, be a set piece and to, 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 to honor the, 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 the movement of his visuals as best as I could. It, it's not very actorly, but um, uh, more kind of like uh, know what instrument I am and, and, uh, and uh, make myself the best instrument uh, for him to play. <laughs> I just think about Ridley making myself a clarinet and Ridley just being like, this is Pedro, my clarinet. One of my favorite things about the character is his uh, context uh, in terms of one of the original beloved characters of the first movie, uh, Lucilla, played by Connie Nielsen. I love that, that, that he's part of um, the opening battle and then the reveal is that he uh, is um, part of the connective tissue of the first and second movie by being married to Lucilla. And, um, and working with Paul, it was like, uh, you know, was, was working with Paul was making a friend and, um, that I knew would be my friend. And I was just sort of like waiting as soon as I, as soon as I got to Morocco, I was like, where's Paul? And, um, and, 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 and that was that it, it, it couldn't have felt more safe and and strangely dangerous to 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 have an immediate connection with an actor so that we could beat the shit out of each other and as best as possible excaladiator macrinus who wants to control Rome, whose desire is to be emperor and control the Roman Empire. I, I don't portray a villain. I don't, I don't look at it that way. Brilliant. He's, he's, he's a great director. He's a master at the top of his form, talking about Ridley uh, uh, Scott, he's a master at the top of his form and it's a privilege for me to get the opportunity again to work with him. Watching Paul get beat up was, <laughs> was a lot of fun. He, uh, yeah, God bless him, he's, he's a hardworking young man and, and he has a bright future ahead of him like, like Fred and, and and all these young actors, you, you, you know, it, it was really just put a team of, of, of great young actors. I, I look forward to seeing what the next 20 years looks like uh, for Paul and, 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 and for Fred. Blood, 
violence, laughter, <laughs> rhinoceri, sharks, uh, be beheadings. You know, it's, it's comedy. It's, it's a musical. Okay, it's 20 years later, and I am stepping onto a set where I had an extraordinary experience 25 years ago. And it was just extraordinary and moving, frankly, to be stepping onto that same arena. I really felt as if I had Joaquin and Russell right there with me, even though I had a whole new crew with me as well. Um, it was really, really, really amazing and very hard, I have to say, to leave again. Lucilla has passed the last 18 years as a prisoner of a whole slew of intervening uh, emperors or would-be emperors, people who have fought to gain power only for themselves and who have circumvented any of the real rules for how to nominate a emperor. The Senate has no more power. Everything is about gold and the Praetorians are basically dictating the rules who gets to be emperor? Well, the one who will pay the most. Why do they need Lucilla? And why is she still alive? Well, because she is the daughter of the last legitimate ruler of Rome. And as such, she holds this moral idea. She's a, she's a representation, a symbol of a time that was glorious for Rome. It was the golden years, the 80 golden years of the Roman Empire that people in, the, in history still talk about. Uh, but now those times are over and she has been basically used as a hostage uh, and kept in chains uh, for the past 20 years. She's heartbroken. She's lost her son, whom she sent away in order to save his life from the Praetorians who would want to murder him so that they could take power for themselves or choose whomever they would put in the so-called holder place uh, of power. Uh, but there's this one beautiful thing in her life, and that is that she is loved by the amazing and uh, very uh, valiant uh, General Acacius, played by Pedro Pascal. And we have some beautiful scenes that show that amazing love story, and that's where we find Lucilla at the outset of the film. I just could not believe it. I walked into a meeting with Ridley in Los Angeles before, way before we started shooting, and he had not changed, incredibly. Like, he had just not changed, and uh, was so excited about starting this film and excited to show me all of the things that they had prepared. And he was also really, really, really excited that we would be working with Paul Mescal. And it's just been like that throughout. Um, just like in the first film, it was so interesting to see how Ridley really considers the whole process as something organic that keeps developing. It isn't something that's a closed uh, box that he now has to put on the, the screen. No, everything is like this plant-like nature of, 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 of evolving and of growing together. And um, he really so welcomes ideas. And what if, or wouldn't that be cool if, uh, and what do you think of? And he's just really, really receptive to that. And as an actor, that just gives you like an enormous confidence because you feel like I'm going to go in here and I'm going to be received. He doesn't always have to agree. Many times you say, no, that's shit. <laughs> but you never feel like it's something that's negative or at all. It just it's about whether it vibes with what he's hearing inside his head. And so he'll keep on encouraging you to come up with something else uh, or say it differently. Or And, and if you hit the the spot, then he's like, go for it. You know, and that's fantastic. I felt like I was discovering as much about Lucilla this time as I was uh, 25 years ago. I think that the discovery process is for me the most amazing part of acting. 
I feel like I'm a detective and I'm going in and I'm starting to build this inner life and this experience and this very specific vibration that that particular individual has when she uh, does anything. And that's one of the things I so love is the telling of the story by telling it to yourself first. Like, what is this person doing? Why is she doing this? What does she believe in? Who does she pray to? How does she, uh, what does she dream of? You know, there are so, so many things that, that goes into building that character. And for me, that was the same this time around. The way that I've changed as an actor is that I no longer worry as much whether a moment is too big. I really, really, really rely on uh, my director to tell me uh, what they need. Whereas before, I wasn't sure if they could be trusted. <laughs> now I trust them much more. <laughs> uh, where to start? So I'll start with Paul. Paul is just, you know, such a serious and wonderful actor. Um, I sensed immediately that he was holding on to that burden he was carrying for his character. And so it was very important for me from the beginning to be respectful of the burden, of the emotional burden he was carrying. And I did that all the way through. And it was a very lovely sort of knowing process where we knew what the other person was doing, but we never said anything. You know, we just held it. Um, with Pedro, I told him a story about something that I had once seen. And I said, what do you think? Should we play that? And he was just so game, so happening, and so, I mean, wildly charismatic. It is, I mean, I just don't think that there are enough words to describe the incredible joy it is to be around him. I hope that the audience takes away from glad. I hope that the audience uh, comes away with an experience of having lived inside another era, and yet at the same time understand just how close we are to the people in the past. We are so much more like them than unlike them, and while I do think we have evolved many wonderful and important codes of uh, equality uh, in the world. Um, we also, just like in the past, are still making huge mistakes. And as you can see in the film, we all need to just pay attention to the things that matter uh, about our lives and about our society and who gets to control it. I was driving a car and my phone was connected to the radio of the car and I saw the phone call come in from my agent so I picked it up and she told me that the news that, that they got this uh, this this role they're asking me if I wanted to play this person um, and I was so flabbergasted and moved and just rocked that I had to pull the car to the side of the road, park it, and like properly have a conversation. And then I sat in silence for maybe 20 minutes alone in the car after just being like, am I in a dream right now? Is this real? You, yeah, that, 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 was, that was my experience of it all. I similarly I had a phone call. I had a missed phone call when I was on the tube from my agents. And I was at Westminster Station I don't live in Westminster, but um, my curiosity got the better of me, and I got off the tube and I called them, and then they told me the news, and I walked home from Westminster thinking, um, wow, what, uh, what, uh, what a gift I've been given. I play a character called Gator. Uh, he's the emperor. And I play a character named Caracalla, also who is an emperor. also an yeah. emperor. There's two. At the same one. time, in fact. Yeah. We both were, were co-emperors, twin emperors. At the you could same say. time. In unison. Unison. In uh, theory. Yeah. yeah. In, <laughs> they're practicing emperors and trying to uh, rule uh, the empire. 
concurrently the Empire, at the same time. At, at the time of, uh, I don't think they know it no. when the film begins, but at the time uh, that it starts, Rome isn't so hot on these guys. You know, they're, they're, they're not, they're not... Not nailing being an emperor. No. At the no. Currently, yeah. it's not going well, um, but in their delusion, they think they're, uh, then they Rock are. Rock stars. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's truly one of a kind. There, there, there is no one like uh, Sir Ridley Scott. Um, the way that he makes a movie is, is so... Uh, Full on, it's it's so immersive. Um, it's it's just it won't. No no one has done it like that, and and I don't think anyone else can. It, it he operates usually eight to twelve cameras all at once, filming at the same time. He watches them all. He's orchestrating the scene like it's this event. So every single day, you feel like you are at um, you're part of this enormous event. There is no set like a Ridley Scott set. It's uh, it's laced with this urgency and uh, the, a vitality and a sense of it feels important because it is. But it feels uh, like you're capturing moments that re that really matter. Um, and in that case, it is um, it's unlike any other filmmaking experience I've experienced, and uh, I doubt I will experience again. I think there was nothing but reverence and respect for it. Uh, what he did in that film, uh, especially as an actor so young, uh, kind of being able to uh, embody that role and that responsibility was uh, pretty extraordinary. I think that we had our own task uh, to achieve, uh, our own kind of direction that we had to kind of take take this role, uh, these roles. They're very they they serve a different purpose than uh, comedies did in the first Gladiator. So whilst it was um, an amazing piece of work, we didn't want to kind of be too bogged down by uh, something that's happened, and that was something amazing that happened. We had to focus on the task at hand, really. Uh, some songs, some great songs. <laughs> we sing some great... <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, really good really tap good. dancing number. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> It's epic in every sense of the word. Um, this is the kind of movie that is meant to be seen on the biggest screen possible, with the loudest sound, and the most people. It, it, Joe was talking about this earlier, how it's, it's, it's about... This is something that's meant to be felt in communion, and um, the act of going to a theater and seeing it with a community of people who are screaming and cheering and, 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 and experiencing the full sensorial um, insanity that is this movie. Uh, I, I, I just think it's, it's an event.